Hey, um, yeah, so we're, we're, are we good now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. So this is a Studio 6 session from CJSF, and we have Kamikaze Nurse in. Thank you for being here. Uh, take it away into your first song whenever you're ready. Thanks for having us. This is Blue Garlic Man.
have to do. Yay! <laughs> uh, there's some clapping outside by like the single person out there, but um, hey, um, thank you so much for all of you for being here today. Um, and for, yeah, for finally being able to make this happen. Um, I gotta say, you know, um, you are one of my favorite bands in the local scene right now, and I'm not just saying that because you're the people currently in this room. So um, I'm very excited to have you uh, to have you in finally. Um, so let's get going on it. You just put out an album. Well, not just, but this year you put out an album called Bucky Fleur. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Cool. Great. <laughs> um, how was the uh, how was the experience of writing Bucky Fleur and like recording it, etc. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Casey. My final start. Sorry, there's effects on this, but maybe they'll add to the vibe. Um, we, we, I guess, can't say for everyone, but I feel like we got together really fast. Um, and we just, I had like maybe like some of the songs, like three or four of the songs in my mind already. And then John and I, when we started playing, they just like, were realized really fast. And then when um, Ethan and Sonia joined, I felt like it went to this different place. So like side A of Bucky Fleur, I think sounds really like, you know, this is the band. And then side B, like, it's like, actually, wait, this is the band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> so uh, maybe, maybe, so the band has seen multiple configurations then. So it, it has been John and Casey kind of starting and then we have Ethan and Sonia kind of joining in halfway through the process. That's about right. So how was, okay, so for you two, how, how was that? How was like coming into like something that was already like kind of half? Yeah, I want to know. How was that? Half there <laughs> and, uh, and having to like kind of adapt and transform into it. It was really cool. When I joined, um, there was like maybe four songs written or something and just kind of dove right in and, and wrote some cool riffs and it was awesome. And then I think we were, we recorded some demos at Vivo, like oh, yeah. probably four after our like fourth or fifth time jamming and they sounded sick. So yeah, it was, it was just, just like an office room yeah. with our gear. And then John had this really great idea of putting my amp in the bathroom. Yeah. And then, so we got some bathroom amps. <laughs> very, bathroom reverb. Yeah. It's very <laughs> natural. Very natural. Oh. Yeah. Not yet. No. I, I joined really late, so... In, like, November? Time, December. I think, like, October or something. Okay. And by the time I joined, like, all the bass lines were written by the previous bassist, so it's been interesting playing half the songs having, like, having kind of reworked yeah. the songs, but still at its core, it's, like, a different person's part. And then half, like, whatever we wrote after I joined is mine, so that's mm -hmm. been kind of cool. I like it. Did did you feel like with the specialist songs that were already like kind of uh, preconceived by John and Casey, like that that you as a as a team effort uh, had to like rewire them or reconstruct them in any capacity, or was it just kind of like a really natural? Well, I play like, the bass and nobody notices what I do. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, what, what about you, Casey? Um, did you feel like having like Ethan and uh, and Sonya join kind of? I don't know, I felt like just immediately there was a really good chemistry and then I think from that, like, it just felt natural and fast and it never felt like, like we were stuck on a song for very long. It was kind of like, I mean, no one can see Ethan's pedal board right now, but it's like, it makes the most insane noises and I think <laughs> that with the, like, we're just very complimentary guitar players in this project together mm. and it didn't take a lot of, like, you know, formalizing, is that a word? Formulating. <laughs> you know, when like people sit in a room, they're like, oh yeah, we want this band to sound like this. That didn't really happen with us. I think we just kind of like, I trust that we are all gonna do really different things, but like over time, and I'm glad that it didn't take too much time. Um, it'll just kind of like mesh together into the zone, its own like new thing. I I'd say that Bucky Fleur is a perfect like testament of that. Actually, I uh, I think it totally has that. It has this like really chaotic energy to it, but at the same time, it all kind of comes comes together. It has like especially rhythm section wise. I think it really it's a really driving album. Um, so speaking of songs, why don't we take it uh, into the next song then? Okay, this one's called Sacred Cow Hot Dog. Hot Dog. I don't know. Uh -huh. 
a bit rough this morning. <laughs> Sick. Um, this is the second tuning break, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, more questions then. So, um, why sacred cow hot dog? Oh. Anyone else want to try to answer that one? We don't know. It's your song. Oh shit. <laughs> you called it that. Damn. It's uh, I think the the answer to that is fuck. It's like in that, I mean, just the answer's in the lyrics, I guess. I was thinking about, um, like, I guess the, the sacred versus the very, very unsacred. Opposite of sacred, the very base and trashy. So like a sacred cow made into a hot dog. Yeah, no, I, the hot dogs are probably the, the least sacred thing in the world, so. Uh, and it seems to be like n n not not the hot dog theme, but like these kind of really strange and biggest song names. So we had Blue Garlic Man was the first <laughs> song you played, right? Yeah, so and, I think I and, put that one up. And I was always like Blue Garlic Blue Garlic Man. It's, like who is the Blue Garlic Man? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the song at all. <laughs> it's uh, the Blue Garlic Man is is the slime from Dragon Quest that Casey saw on my shelf one day and said. What's that? And I said, it's the slime. And she said, looks like a blue garlic man. <laughs> so that's the origin of that song. It's yeah. So so, but maybe let's expand on that a little bit in the sense of like, so the songs are. So what are your songs about? Like, what kind of themes are you trying to hit with, uh, maybe in this album and and with the band in general? It seems more like stream of consciousness. It's pretty surreal. Maybe the lyrics maybe. are pretty surreal. Yeah. I um, had this realization. Um, like a couple of weeks ago that like sorry this is so pretentious but these are like rock poems <laughs> <laughs> is no. that a genre do people like that shit yeah yeah rock I, poetry I, I, I don't know if there's 
I don't have the pretension of saying that. You know, I think a lot of lyrics are approached in the same way that poetry is approached. So, you know, in a way, I think we're just we're just really like lining up with a lyric is right, which is like a rock poem. So, oh yeah, <laughs> but um, very utilitarian. Um, I so upon reading the article with um, with this quarter that you did uh, a couple months back, like th so there was um, yeah there was like a lot of nautical themes that came. It seems that like a lot of it comes from like literature. Yeah, mm. I just I I really like Joseph Conrad. He wrote a lot of good books. <laughs> Lord Jim, anyone? Come on. <laughs> Talk to the, the audience out there. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> so, the songs are about nature, right? I feel like, yeah. Yeah, often about nature, uh, death, decay. The good stuff. Yeah. Water. Yeah, all, all, all the best things in life water and death. Uh. Um, and then I, I, I wanted to ask you about the cover art and actually the whole like art for the for the album. It's quite, um, I think it's very iconic of, of the kind of music that you write. But uh, how did what it, what is it? How is it? Uh, it's our friend um, Barry Dupay. He's a really cool like animator, media artist, and I really like his art. Um, and so I just asked him if he would design an album cover for us because I knew he used to uh, like he. He, I think he did a, like a project with MTV once. Mm. So he had, I mean, I don't know, his art is just very like surreal and, and like really like one of a kind, like it doesn't look like anything else. And I just like yeah. thought it'd be like a, it made sense. And I also wanted to just like have that more like art crossover. I mean, we could have designed it ourselves, I guess, but I like having, not having control. I'm friends with Barry too, and I've always wanted Yeah, I mean, it would be really cool to, for him to make us a music video because he makes these like tripped out insane animations, but no money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so album art is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's something I think it's very, um, you know, it. There's some people would say that like Kamikaze Nurse is almost like a super group just because all of you come from like different bands and bands that are quite known in the scene, but also like beyond music, like a, lo a lot of you are involved in like other kinds of media, other kinds of art, other kinds of productions. So uh, do you feel like that kind of informs the way in which Kamikaze Nurse exists? For sure, I think, yeah. Like, um, we're going to play this thing called Live Biennial in October, and it's a performance art festival that happens once a year, right? Twice. Don't. No, once every two years, sorry. The Biennial, duh. Oh, man, I'm so It means so the same thing, so, like... <laughs> The, the word means either like twice yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, twice a year or every two years. But yeah, but it's like a performance art festival and they're encouraging us to be more like, they're like, you can, you know, take this anywhere you want. So we're kind of trying to think of how we can do it in a way that's like us, but also maybe a bit more experimental, like pushing it a little bit. Because I just like that, like, I think we're all comfortable with each other at this point to like jump off the diving board a little bit into a vat of who knows what? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> performance art. A vat of performance art. Whatever um, that means. I, well, you know, and so with that, so you you have the show coming up. Uh, is there anything else? What 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 does the future hold for for this band? Is there anything new that we should know about? New album, new things. I know you put up Bucky Flair, but we're like writing uh, new songs. Like uh, we have three new songs. We're playing two of them today. And uh, we'll be recording in 2020 again. Cool. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually really glad we rescheduled this to today because I don't think we had the two new songs ready. Yeah. So it's cool that we have new stuff to play. Cool. And is that is that what you're going to play right now? Uh, this this is a new one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Then uh, why don't we why don't we take it away into the new one? Let me see how the, the tuning is. <laughs> bit of more guitar in the mix of my guitar in the mix if possible but if not we'll just make it work okay let's see let's see how this one goes it's gonna be some off the cuff lyric writing
Kamikazeners live from Studio Six. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. I'm sweating. Woo! Yeah! Okay! Okay! Wow, that was, uh... Like, honestly, fucking awesome. Um, yeah.